This was a while back, but it still bothers me to this day. It was 2016 and me, 22, and my husband, 28, were moving into a rental home. I was six months pregnant and we were thrilled to move into a nice community since before we had lived in a pretty sketchy part of town. We didn't know much about this rental except it was in a good school district, a low crime area and within our budget. Time passes without any problems and soon our son was born. His birth was textbook and he slept well in the hospital. This all changed when we brought him home. The first night home was awful. Every time we set him in his crib, he screamed. And I'm not talking a normal I'm hungry or need a new diaper cry. A legitimate scream like he was in pain. My husband and I had to take shifts at night so one could be with him and the other could sleep a little. My shift was always second and started around 2 to 3 in the morning. I tried my best to sleep but shortly after my son's birth I began having horrible nightmares. I would dream nightly about my son being hurt or needing me and I couldn't get to him. At my six week checkup I told my OBGYN and she believed that I was having postpartum anxiety and prescribed me some medicine and recommended that I see a counselor. Weeks passed by since starting the medication and counseling and I was still having nightmares and my son was still screaming all night long. His pediatrician told us that it was colic and that we just needed to wait it out. Everything changed when he turned three months old. His screaming continued but started to be all day instead of just at night. My nightmares became much more specific. One night, I dreamed that I walked into my son's room and he was on fire and screaming. Though I was in his room, my feet were stuck inside his doorway. I couldn't move or speak. I could only watch my son screaming in pain. I woke up screaming and hyperventilating. My husband ran into our room and tried to console me. In the next few days, I could not sleep. I spent most of my days at work and my evenings sitting on my front porch talking to my next door neighbor. She was the sweetest old lady who had lived in this neighborhood since it was originally built in the 70s. I guess she could tell something was wrong and asked me if I was okay. Reluctantly, I told her how my baby had been acting and how I was having horrible nightmares. She was sympathetic and asked me to elaborate, and I didn't feel comfortable telling her the details, so I just told her that I had dreams about fires in the house. Her face quickly changed from caring and concerned to horrified. Seconds of quiet felt like hours before she spoke again. Do you know what happened at this house? She said and I told her no. She sighed and looked down before grabbing my hands and looking at me. She goes on to tell me that a few years ago there was a fire at the house due to some faulty wiring done poorly by the landlord. There was a young family with a three-month-old baby living there, and unfortunately the baby passed away in the fire. She said the couple moved away and the house was renovated and put up for rent after. And at that moment, I was in complete shock. I ran inside to my husband holding our baby and told him that we needed to leave. He must have seen the fear in my eyes since he didn't ask me to explain myself until we got in the car. I explained what happened in the house and how I felt like my dreams were warnings that we needed to leave before something happened to our baby. Luckily, my brother-in-law lived in the next town over, so we went there. The first night we stayed in his house, our son slept through the entire night, not a single peep. I checked on him every hour since it was so unusual for him to sleep this well, and from then on, apart from normal baby stuff, my son never screamed again like he did in that house. My husband packed our stuff and we stayed with my brother-in-law until we were able to get out of our lease and rent a new place. I never went back, and I will never go back. I just pray for whoever moves in there next. I'm 27, my husband is 30, and our daughter is 1. This story happened last night, so I'm running off like 2 hours of sleep, and my daughter wasn't into the idea of sleeping in this morning. Now, to start, my husband, our 1-year-old, and myself live in a rental and have been here for 3 years now. When we first moved in, there was a random doorbell that would go off, 
There isn't a doorbell here that we can see, and we thought that there was probably a battery-powered doorbell stored in the attic that is probably dying or malfunctioning. That eventually stopped and we forgot about it for the most part. My husband also used to see what he called shadow people and hear footsteps and have horrible sleep paralysis dreams. I always chalked it up to his mind playing tricks on him or him trying to scare me. It's been a few years since any of that has happened though and for the year that our daughters live with us, zero spooky things happened until last night. My husband works the night shift so it's just me and the baby most nights. Well last night my daughter wakes up around midnight so I get her and bring her to my bed. She's back asleep and I'm wide awake scrolling through Hulu. As I'm searching for a show to watch, I kid you not, the foot of my bed, frame, and all lifts like half a foot off the ground and slams back down. My daughter is still asleep, but I'm immediately frozen in fear. My first thought is, there is someone under my bed, but I quickly realize that I couldn't even fit under my bed, so this is far-fetched, but not any better. I quickly scoop my daughter up, football style, stand on my bed and jump off the bed as far as possible and run out of the room. I grab our gun, call my husband, shaking and sobbing to please come home, and then call my mom to pick us up. We're a one-vehicle family. At that point, our kitchen lights start to dim until they were completely off, which was the last straw for me. I took my daughter and went to the front yard in only a t-shirt and panties until my husband got home about 10 minutes later. He did a sweep of the house and nothing seemed out of place, which weirdly only made me more scared, like I would rather a stranger be under my bed than some invisible force, but I still went to my mother's. I finally fell asleep about 3.30 and my husband picked us up at 5am when he got off of work. I'm afraid to sleep here, so I've been awake ever since. I don't know how I'm going to be here alone at night anymore. I'm trying to debunk what happened and find an explanation, but I just can't. It may not sound scary to you, but I had never felt so scared in my life, and scary stuff is ten times worse when you have a baby to protect. What do I do? How do I bless my home correctly without making things worse? Also, I don't drink or do any drugs, so it's not like I was tripping or something. My mom is a paranormal buff, and my husband and I agreed after one too many crappy spouses and scary movies to always believe each other when we say something is up, so they both believe me, but I still feel crazy. I need some help identifying whatever the hell is here with me. I just got back from a week-long vacation last night and the same activity from the house that I was staying in is going on at my apartment. I apologize in advance for any incoherence in what I say because I haven't gotten much sleep the last week. The house we stayed in was gorgeous and since my entire extended family was staying there, 18 people, it was also absolutely massive. It was split into two parts. The old side of the house, roughly just a basement studio and three bedrooms upstairs, and the newer side. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the newer side as no paranormal activity took place there, but it was a gorgeous house. I shared a room with my girlfriend, and since we were the last to arrive, we got the worst room in the house. Not only did we get the smallest room in the house, it was about 10 feet by 10 feet, it was also on the old side of the house, directly in front of the basement stairs. As I had been driving for six hours that day, I was pretty tired, so I said hello to everyone and quickly got into bed to go to sleep. It was around 11pm when my girlfriend and I got into bed. She's lucky in the sense that she can fall asleep just about anywhere in five minutes, so she was out within seconds. I had a weird uneasy feeling in my chest. Not necessarily a scary feeling, just that annoying, alert feeling you get when you feel like something is watching you. And to help ease myself, I hop right down into a YouTube rabbit hole. About an hour into my journey, I could tell that my girlfriend was having a nightmare, so I put my hand on her arm to gently wake her up. But as soon as I touched her, she bolted awake screaming, 
mumbled something like the ghost and immediately went back to sleep. I had just started to get tired and safe to say I was sufficiently creeped out at this point so back down the rabbit hole I went. About two hours went by when my girlfriend woke up screaming again saying the footsteps are close and then passed out immediately again. I decided I'm not going to sleep that night and went right back to YouTube. Another hour passes and I see my girlfriend sit up in bed but she was still asleep. She moved, so she was sitting on the edge of the bed and started having a conversation with the corner of the room. She eventually laid back down, but not before I was absolutely terrified. Activity died down after the first night, usually just creaks in the floor and knocks on the wall and door. The only other standout event besides movement around the room happened on the second to last night when something sat down on the edge of my bed. My first thought was that my cat had jumped up on the bed, but I remember I wasn't at my apartment and sat up just in time to see the indentation lift up off the edge of the bed. It couldn't have been my girlfriend as she was on the opposite side of the bed and nowhere near where the indentation happened. Also the bed I was staying in was as firm as a rock so it was challenging to push that far down into it. Fast forward one more sleepless night and I'm on my way home. After a long day of driving, I got back and settled down with some Netflix. My girlfriend had plans to go hang out with her friends, so she was out most of the night. I thought I'd finally get a break from the spooky stuff when my dog and cat both start tracking something around my apartment. The way their heads were moving, whatever they saw was moving fast. Now I've seen them track bugs before, but neither of them really focus on it too much. They usually just huff and ignore it, but... This was different. Poppy, my dog, started growling when whatever it was moved into the corner of the room. My cat Anna jumped up right next to me on the couch while Poppy growled at the corner and started to slowly back up towards me. After a full week of crap like this, I wasn't even scared anymore. Just angry and tired because it likes to keep me from falling asleep. Poppy and Anna both track the thing moving out of the corner towards us, so she starts barking like crazy. After I got her to stop barking, I heard a growl come from the center of the room. It was pretty high-pitched, like a small dog or a girl. Judging by where my pets were tracking, it looked like it was very short, very fast, and could jump up on the table and counters. I stood up, stared in its general direction, and said, Please leave. I got a huge wave of chills and got goosebumps in places I didn't know I could get goosebumps, but I said it again much louder and more stern this time while opening my front door to let it out. Whatever it was got really upset it seemed. It didn't do anything but I could feel a lot of anger. My pets tracked it moving towards the door so I thought that I was in the clear. About two minutes later my dog starts barking at the corners of the room where the the door is while my cat is on full alert staring at the same place. At this point I just give up and hope it just leaves me alone since it hadn't been violent yet, just annoying. Poppy eventually fell asleep at my feet and Anna had run into the other room, occasionally poking her head out the door to look in and immediately spring back into the room. I just gave up dealing with it at this point. I put my earbuds in to block out the knocks on the walls and watch some YouTube. I decided to stay up until my girlfriend got back to let her know what was happening, but whatever it was took this as an opportunity to mess with me. I was laying on my couch and kept feeling something poking me every five minutes. Not hard, just constant pokes on my arms and legs and feet. And after this went on for a while, it pulled up on my nostrils. Again, I just ignored it because I learned it just gets worse if I engage with it. Whenever something like this would happen, I could feel the apartment get much colder, despite my thermostat saying that it was 72 degrees. After hours of knocking, poking, pulling, and the occasional arm brush, my girlfriend finally got home. The second she got through the door, I could tell whatever it was left as I had no uneasy feeling and there were no more weird noises, so I had one of the most restful nights I've had in over a week. 
I don't know if it's gone for good or if it will come back tonight, but I will post an update tomorrow if anything happens. Other than the growl and the short but overwhelming sense of anger, it hasn't been violent or disturbing, just really annoying. Any help on how to identify or safely communicate with it would be greatly appreciated. I was about six or seven years old and my mother and I were on a routine grocery run to our local Walmart. I remember getting out of the car and walking up to the entrance. We had parked sort of in the back so we had a little walk to the front. As we walk up I see a homeless man asking for change from every person that walks by. He asks the woman in front of us for change and as she turns him down he scoffs and begins to say something rude towards the woman. My mother and I walk past him with haste to avoid conflict as he seems to be extremely agitated. We get inside and get our groceries and everything seems fine. As we load up and begin to leave, I remember my mother pulling out two dollars to specifically give the man as he is presumably still at the entrance begging. My mother, trying to avoid conflict, wants to hand him the money and be on her way so we don't end up getting harassed as the woman before us did. As we walk out, I raise my arms to my mother in little kid fashion to be picked up as I'm scared of the encounter we're about to have with the man. My mother picks me up and we begin to leave the store. Before the man can ask us for money, my mother hands him the cash and we walk away conflict free. I'm being held by my mother at this point with my head facing behind her. As we're about halfway to our car, I look up from the pavement and Look at the man whom is staring directly at me with the most sinister face. At this point his features seem distorted and what I can only describe as demonic. He's smiling and sticking his tongue out almost to his chest. He lets out a long hiss as his eyes roll into the back of his head, seemingly invisible to the other people passing him. And I still to this day do not understand how I was so far away but heard his hiss as if though it was right next to my ear. I'm sure it could be dismissed as the homeless guy was on drugs but I think truly this was a demon. It messed me up for a really long time and to this day is a big factor in my belief of the paranormal. Two years ago, I took my wife, my father and son, then three, to visit family in rural New England in America. They live on a small farm with buildings that date back to the 1700s which have been restored and modernized, and a guest house which is built about 20 years ago. My cousin is a prolific photographer and my auntie had decorated most of the rooms in the main house and guest house with her photos. We didn't notice much about the photos in the guest house when we first arrived, probably because we were all jet lagged. The next morning, after a sound night's sleep, we were sitting in the main family room eating breakfast and making plans for the day when I noticed that my son was keeping his head down and not answering my father whenever he spoke to him, which was unusual because even at that young age they were very close. I looked over to my dad and noticed that he was sitting in front of a photo of a room in a run-down house. The room had a large window with sunlight streaming in, casting shadows across the length of the room towards a dark corner. I got an uneasy feeling from the photo, but I really didn't think much more of it. We finished breakfast and all got up from the table and I noticed my son was walking in a wide arc around the end of the table where my father had been sitting, again weird behavior but I just dismissed it as a weird three-year-old thing. Over the next day or so I noticed him becoming more and more uneasy any time we were at the dining table and doing whatever he could to avoid looking at the photo. I decided to ask him what was wrong and he answered me very matter-of-factly. The bad man in the picture is looking at me. He's very cold and he's not nice. I looked back at the picture and got instant chills down my spine. There was no man in the picture, but I got the feeling that there was more to it than an empty room. I decided to ask my cousin about the picture and she told me that it was taken at an abandoned farm a bit further upstate. 
It was one of her favorite pictures, but had always given my aunt the creeps, so it was moved to the guest house. Over the next couple of days, whenever I would ask my son about it, he would say things like, The bad man is looking at me. He doesn't like me. He wants to hurt me. I didn't think much of it until we were going to bed one night and my son tripped and fell, seemingly for no reason in the middle of the hall, and started crying hysterically. When I asked him if he was okay, he said, The bad man hurt me on the leg. I checked at his leg, and sure enough, on the side of his leg there was a large bruise that looked like he had been struck with a blunt object. I didn't want to play into his fears, but asked him how the bad man could hurt him if he was in the photo downstairs near the table. His answer was enough for me to pack up all our stuff and move to the main house with my aunt, uncle, cousins, and big burly housekeeper right away. He's not down there. He comes up here when we go to bed. We left soon after, so I never found out anything more about the farm where the photo was taken, but I'm sure there was some kind of evil presence around it. Has anybody experienced something similar? And please share if you have. This story took place when I was a kid. My dad had been a pool man for many years. One of his oldest customers decided to purchase a ranch. I don't exactly remember where, and he asked my dad if he could come and fix their pool, which was disastrously maintained before he bought it. He gave my dad permission to bring us along and told us that we were welcome to stay a few days to enjoy the ranch. We drove there, and I had been in charge of reading the map quest instructions because I never seemed to be able to sleep during car trips. We drove back home a few days later after my dad was finally able to save the pool. The drive home was very long, and for long stretches the view was mostly desert, farms, and the occasional small suburban town. Unlike me, my mom and brothers knocked out almost immediately, so most of the trip is just my dad and I talking or listening to music. I'm also a very avid reader, so I had a book on my lap beside the maps. I remember the ride had been quiet for a while because I had been reading. I had to stop because it was getting dark and my dad only let me turn on the dome lights to read the maps. No radio service and the Game Boy's batteries had all died. All I had left to do was look outside. All of a sudden, I spotted a very tall shadow on a roof. I realized that there was a man who seemed to be wearing a hat, bowler or top hat, dancing and jumping from roof to roof of the suburban lot. Kind of like the scene in Singing in the Rain, which at that point I hadn't seen. It took a second to realize that it wasn't a normal thing to see. The houses were separated in a way where a normal person couldn't have jumped roof to roof. What scared me the most is how at the last house before a field, he seemed to turn around and sense me. He bowed and tipped his hat. Even though I couldn't see it, I could sense it smiling. All I felt was dread. I turned to face my dad to see if he saw him, but he had been paying attention to the road. When I turned back, I couldn't see the houses anymore as they were way behind us. I never saw a face or any details. He was just a silhouette on the roofs. I remember feeling afraid that it would follow us that it could if it wanted to. I never saw something like that on our many road trips ever again, and sometimes I wonder if I imagined it, but it felt so real. The memory is so vivid as well, which always comes back when I'm watching old musicals because the dancing reminds me of the way it moved. I bought a painting at a thrift store of a beautiful young angel a few months ago. I was immediately drawn to it, which is not typical for me. I'm not into art or angels, and I hung it up in my bedroom the same day I bought it. The next morning when I woke up, the living room lights were on. I thought that was strange that I would have not noticed that I'd left them on when I went to bed since I can see my living room from my bedroom and would notice if the lights were on. The next night, I made sure that they were off when I went to bed. 
and sure enough, the next morning they were on again. Same thing happened the next night. This time I woke up at around 3am and could see from my bed the living room lights were on again. After that third night, I had never had an issue again, so I chalked it up to some type of electrical thing and it being a coincidence with the painting. Although the lights never turned on automatically during the day, just while I slept. Then, just the other day, I was in my bedroom putting laundry away and the painting started swinging. Like it was very, very noticeable. I just sort of stared at it, watching it, and then it just stopped. That's never happened before. Nothing could have hit it. There were no breezes or drafts. It was really, really swinging. I'm not sure what to think. I don't get a bad feeling from it, and I should mention that I live by myself so no one could have turned the lights on after I went to bed or moved the painting. I was with my girlfriend preparing dinner. The year was 2015 and everything seemed normal. I put on some music and the speakers were in my room. While we were cooking, I noticed that the music was no longer being listened to. I was surprised that something happened with the internet because it was Spotify. I went to the bedroom and I noticed that the playlist continued but the volume knob had been set to zero. I didn't pay much attention to it at that moment. I set the knob again and went to the kitchen to continue with dinner, and not even two minutes passed when, again, I noticed that no music was being heard. This time it seemed really strange to me. I lived alone and we were just my girlfriend and I, and I went into my room and this time the knob was on one so I could lightly hear some music. I was surprised because it was a physical and not digital fault with what was going on. Again. I turned the knob and returned to the kitchen. I tried not to think about that and concentrated on cooking when suddenly I clearly hear things on the floor, this time in the studio that was next to my room. It bothered me, the idea of passing by these things instead of enjoying a pleasant evening with my girlfriend. I asked her if she had heard that sound and she said no. I replied that it was clearly a noise from the studio so she told me let's take a look. In effect, there were things on the floor. I wanted to think that it had simply fallen, and we picked them up, turned off the lights and left, and we were in the kitchen again when we heard another noise. This time, she could also appreciate that. And I told her something was happening, and she, being a very religious person, told me not to worry. And we went to the studio, and this time, the light was on, and there was again some things being thrown around. There were no open windows or wind currents. It seemed very strange to us. We searched everything and before leaving I pronounced aloud that I would leave the light on. And we left kind of nervous. We would not reached the kitchen when noises were heard again. This time I was really afraid that it was a thief who had entered the house. We ran to the study and the lights were off and a TV that was there was on with static. We looked at each other and... I told her that that was not normal and that something was happening and we should probably do something. She proposed that we pray and we went to the kitchen and she took my hands and we said two prayers that she knew. When we finished, something was heard again. I wanted to go see but I was shocked to see that just outside the kitchen there was an inflatable toy that I used to have to punch for fun in the studio. It was horrible, I had no idea how it had even got there and at that moment I felt very scared. I didn't know if it was something paranormal or if a person entered the house and was playing the worst joke ever on us. My girlfriend asked me what was wrong with me, why I stood at the door. I told her not to leave the kitchen, that I didn't want her to see that but she leaned out and screamed. I tried to calm her down, nothing had ever happened in that house. We were very scared and at that moment, the bell rang. I answered on the intercom and nothing. Every time I was more nervous but I tried to stay calm. I walked towards her and the bell rang again. I answered and nothing. I told her let's get out of here. Something or someone is bothering us. 
It occurred to me to go to the house of a cousin who lived nearby, and then the lights started to blink. It was terribly terrifying. Getting to the street was a great relief, and by the way, it was completely desolate outside. We walked a few blocks until we reached my cousin's house. We told her everything while our hands were still shaken, and she believed us, and she had some holy water, and that we had to go back because what had happened to us was not normal. When we came back with the holy water, loud music could be heard from the street. We opened the door with fear and immediately my cousin began to sprinkle holy water all over the place. The inflatable toy was in another location. It seemed that it had moved a few meters from where we last saw it. The knob of the speakers was at maximum and all the lights in the house were on. It seemed that they had had a small party without us and was horrible. Note on the Spotify browser was written reggaeton and the first playlist was playing. And I hate reggaeton music. I never put that kind of music on before. I don't even know how it's spelled, but it was written the same way that I used to know. And that was very shocking to me. I was never super skeptical of the paranormal, but I didn't believe everything I heard until that night. And for good luck, I can say that after using the holy water... Nothing else happened in that house. I no longer live there. I threw the toy away and the girlfriend is now my wife and we know that all that was real. These spirits or entities do exist and we must be careful and have faith in God and not let them disturb us. So this happened a little bit ago. I was 17 at the time. It was summer, so we were heading to my uncle's house. He owns a little house near a beach, and getting to his house, we have to go past this big stretch of forest that spans on and on for about an hour or so. The sun was just covering everything in some nice light after it rose, and then it got weird. I remember that my dad turned off his music to pull up the GPS, and... I looked at the forest watching all the trees speed by. Then I also took notice that we were the only cars on the road. The only car. None behind, none in front. Hell, I didn't see another car for like an hour and a half while driving here besides pulling out of my driveway and getting on the road. I thought it was really weird, especially since I'm in a pretty populated area. It's Oregon after all in the middle of summer. I kept looking at the forest and, I kid you not, a clearing opened for a few seconds and I saw two men wearing black suits and black sunglasses, with black gloves and shoes as well, tying some big hairy creature to a tree. I just kept looking at them and they were looking at me, not the car, me directly, like they knew that I saw them. It scared the crap out of me and I asked my dad if he saw them and he seemed confused and then said that he didn't see a thing. He was too busy driving and looking at his GPS. I don't really believe in strange things like this, but I can't explain what I saw, and I don't know how to feel. Thinking about it now, I just get uneasy and scared. The creature looked like it was chained up, and it wasn't lashing around or anything or freaking out, and to make it worse, as soon as we left that forest, we started to join back in with other cars. It was like I stepped into some sort of crime scene. Has anyone else ever had an experience like this, or can I chalk it up to just my hyper-imagination? So I bought a doll today with an attachment and just wanted to share what happened already. So I got her home and placed her on the top of my entertainment center pretty high up. Now for starters, the moment I got her in the car, I put an EMF to her with a built-in spirit box. The EMF was spiking, and after a few seconds of moving it away and moving it closer again, the spirit box said, Don't. So I stopped and apologized. I spoke to the spirit of the doll while driving, letting the spirit know that it was in good hands, kind of like talking to a friend. Now, once we got home, I placed her down, and I decided to leave her for a bit to get accustomed. 
Upon returning, I decided to do another EMF spirit box check to see if I had any better luck at this point. I'm short, so I wasn't holding it up very high. The spirit box said, higher. I raised it higher, and then the box asked, what do you want me to do? The spirit for some reason was making the meter of the EMF actually bottom out instead of spike, so I requested it to please make the meter go the other way, and it did. Then the box asked, Am I dead? I said yes and proceeded to ask for its name, and it said, Soon. And then all the activity just stopped, almost like it was in shock of finding out that it was dead and needed time to process it. Anyways though, I just wanted to share this with you guys because it was just an incredible experience to have happen. It started a week ago roughly and has happened multiple times. First of all, I want to mention that I live alone and don't have any pets. Last week I went to sleep at around 2am and I had my MacBook Pro closed completely on the floor. While I was in the bed I started to hear typing on the keyboard. It wasn't cracking or anything like that, it was typing and I'm not imagining it at all. It lasted several minutes and then eventually stopped. I freaked out like crazy that night but eventually managed to fall asleep. The next day I also went to bed late and I fell asleep and woke up in the middle of the night by the typing noise of the keyboard. It wasn't a dream, nor am I crazy, it really happened. I was very scared so I turned on the lights and the typing stopped. My computer was still closed as in shut down, so I turned off the lights and ten minutes later I heard the typing on my keyboard again. This time, too, it lasted for a long time, and I almost had a panic attack, and keep in mind, I live alone. It happened again other nights. Every time it happens after I go to sleep, and it can be right after I got to sleep and put the MacBook down, or many hours later in the early morning while I'm still sleeping. It never happens while I'm actually using the computer itself. Last night, I also couldn't sleep because I heard weird noises coming from the windows, like some weird gush of wind, loud noises around my windows, and, of course, again, the typing on the computer. And I'm terrified. What could this be? I was thinking I'm either spied on by some agency that managed to infiltrate my computer and search for something, but what? I have nothing to hide, and I'm a completely average guy. I've never committed any crime whatsoever. And even then, if the computer is closed, how can I hear the typing? I mean, even if they infiltrated, I shouldn't hear typing on the keyboard. Or is it something paranormal? I read I'm not the first guy who has heard typing of a keyboard at night, and other people who have experienced it were equally frightened. Some of them used a mechanical keyboard which is exposed at night, and I have a MacBook Pro and my keyboard isn't exposed because at night I close the PC, as I said. In the sense, I shut the screen above my keyboard so it's not exposed to air. But please, help me figure this out, because it's freaking me out. I'm currently staying in a farmhouse in Northern Ireland. It's a pretty old place and apparently was built on top of the original one according to the owner of it. I never really have believed in any paranormal type stuff, just thought it was too crazy and far-fetched to be real, and I've been telling myself that for the past few hours after what happened. I've already mostly explained what happened in the title, but I'll go into more detail. I woke up to hear the radio next to my bed, which I didn't even know worked, playing random channels, songs, some talking on chat shows or something. I can't really remember as I was just waking up. The radio did finally stop changing channels after a few seconds, however, and was left playing the song Hello by Dragonette. Had to look that up in the morning from the lyrics that I heard. I heard this section of the song before I switched off the radio at the plug. Kind of like this thing, but there's something you should know. I just came to say hello. Hey, I could stick around and get along with you. Now, needless to say, I was already crapping bricks a bit at this point, not because of the lyrics or anything, like I said I don't really believe in ghosts, 
Rather, just the loud noises waking me up was a little rough, and so I felt on edge. The thing that really tied it all together for me and made me so scared was when I checked my phone and it was 3.33 a.m. I moved upstairs to another bedroom and sat up with the lamps on either side of me for hours, watching something on Netflix to take my mind off of stuff. I don't really know what I want out of posting this experience. Maybe some reassurance to tell me that it's all BS. Edit. Things just got a little bit more spicy. I wrote the first part of the post from the upstairs bedroom in the morning and just came down from upstairs to the room this happened in and looked at the radio. It was off on the wall switch, but the radio setting was also turned off on the radio. The only way I can actually play the radio stations is by switching it to on, on the radio, with a switch so it wasn't me hitting it while I slept or something. And now, I'm kind of spooked out. As I'm sure some of you are aware, the hunting season for white-tailed deer is about to start this weekend. I'm a 25-year-old female and have been spending a decent chunk of time in the stand with my partner, in life and in most ventures generally, because we've discovered that hogs have been rooting up the oats and generally causing havoc and scaring away the deer from the feeder. We've gone out a handful of times in the last two weeks, attempting to catch the miscreants at it, and so far, no luck, and it's been very frustrating. At any rate, because of the hogs, I've been spending more time in a stand after dark than I ever have in my life. We've been up there from 9pm to 1am, 10pm to 2am, 9pm to 11pm, and every other weird time slot you can think of. I mention this just in case it's relevant or helps paint a better picture. There have been a few things that have happened that I've struggled to explain away or rationalize, and my partner is out of ideas too. The first thing happened about a week and a half or two weeks ago. It was around one or two in the morning with a decent chunk of moon illuminating the area. I was only half paying attention to my surroundings because I had already written the night off as a bust when all of a sudden I become aware of a weird whirring or flapping sound. I thought it originated from somewhat behind me, but my partner said that he had heard it coming from away to the front left of us. At any rate, it was loud, airborne and passing quickly over us and away. I am very familiar with the sounds drones make and that wasn't it. It also wasn't a helicopter, the sound was too small if that makes sense. And it wasn't a bird, it sounded way too mechanical. It was flying very low, probably just above the tree line, and we couldn't see anything. The second thing happened about a week ago. We weren't in the stand, but it was weird and out of the norm, so I'll mention it. We live on the same property that the stand is on, and it was around 9 or 10 at night when all of a sudden there was a distant boom, like an explosion, which hit our home with a very hard thud. If you've ever spent any time around heavy artillery or explosives, you'll know what I mean. It was strong enough that my sister-in-law, who lives down the road, called us asking what the hell just happened. It could have been a natural gas explosion, but the weirdest part is that my partner did some internet digging and a local emergency management website had posted asking for any info on an unknown explosion back in 2016 during that time of year, and we still have no clue what it was. And then lastly, tonight... We were out in the stand once again, and it's gotten cold, and we've had a ton of rain all day, so everything was damp and dripping. We went out at 10, and it was about 10.30. I was preoccupied with trying to keep my fingers and toes warm when suddenly I became aware of a weird murmuring. My partner heard it too, but he was hearing damage, so I don't think he heard the full breath of the tones. To me, it kind of sounded like muffled voices off in the distance, like several someones having a conversation too far off to make out the individual words. But the direction the sounds were coming from doesn't have any buildings or dwellings, it's just woods. And there were several different tones. My partner said it kind of sounded like a cow moaning, but not quite. There are cattle in the area and we heard them vocalizing all the time. That wasn't that. And there isn't any grazing land in the vicinity of the sound's origins. 
They carried on for maybe 30 seconds, slightly rose in crescendo, and then died off and faded away completely. I want to stress how indistinct these sounds were. If I hadn't been listening intently, I don't know if I would have heard it. All of this, coupled with the general gut feeling I have whenever I'm out in the dark alone, has me wondering. I don't necessarily feel in danger, just generally watched and noticed. I have very good instincts and I try to listen to them. I'd love to know what you all think. There may be a rational explanation for all these phenomenon. All I know is, is I don't want to be another hunter with another creepy story, but I feel like I'm starting to see a bell curve emerge. My dad moved into a house in the middle of the woods about two years ago. And I moved in with him soon after to help him get around and take care of the house and whatnot. No side note, it's an old house on land that Native Americans heavily inhabited in the south. Honestly, this house is really weird. The first night I spent here I was woken up by a woman whispering, is anyone home, right next to me as I was about to fall asleep. My dad didn't believe me when I told him the next day. It's taken a while to get used to living in the deep woods, but something about this property is very off. There's been more than a few times where I've actually felt a heavy presence, almost like someone is standing right behind me. I have a cat who I rely on to alert me when there's someone approaching my room, and there have been times where he's alerted me but nobody was there. Other times he stares at the same corner of my room with an expression that tells me that he can see something I can't. And there's been more times I can count where I'll be leaving a room and a cabinet will slam or it sounds like something was moved behind me. It sounds silly, but it's odd enough for me to notice. I mentioned it to my father, but he didn't think much of it until early this a.m. when he woke up and went downstairs to find the basement flooded. Somehow, the shower in the basement was turned on and the drain had been clogged. Neither of us used that shower in the basement, and he's now fully convinced that there's a ghost in this house. I don't know. If you ask me, I think it's more than the house. I get that feeling even when I'm out on a hike. I always leave food scraps and leftovers out in the tree line for the animals, and sometimes coincidentally find little treasures in the same spot, almost like I made a trade with Mother Nature. Once I left strawberry cake leftovers out, and the next day found a stone with a pink crystal formation. Another time I found an arrowhead carved out of stone. Just kind of a thought that I figured I'd share. I don't believe in ghosts or anything paranormal. I'm not religious or spiritual and just generally don't think any of that sort of exists. But tonight I encountered something that genuinely terrified me and can't form any sort of logical explanation for it. So I have a dog and I almost always walk her at night due to my schedule. I'm currently living with my parents who live in a very upscale private community, one which I'm extremely familiar with and have walked hundreds of times before both during the day and night. It's a very safe place and I'd never felt any sort of risk walking at night aside from visibility to passing cars, for which I wear reflective armbands. Tonight I was taking my dog on her daily walk and we crossed a road that led from one section of the subdivision to another. While entering this next section, I noticed up ahead about 80 to 100 meters a figure moving down the road across from the direction I was going. The best way I can describe it is if a person was wearing a slightly luminescent white hat skipping down the street. The problem is, first of all, there wasn't enough light to get a clear view of whatever I saw. I could definitely see the light that appeared to be a hat, if it was a person wearing one, but not enough to discern anything more, and the most disconcerting thing was that even if it was a person wearing a light-up hat skipping down the street, they would have been moving in slow motion, almost suspended in air in between jumps. There was also no sound either. After seeing this, I yelled out several times asking if there was anyone there and didn't get any response. At that point, I noticed that my dog was whimpering and her tail was between her legs. 
For me, this was the scariest part because I've never seen her act like that in any situation. If she sees another person while we're out walking, she'll get excited and pull on the leash wanting to go up and say hi. If there's another dog or animal she's unsure of, she'll bark and start running in circles around me. I have never, under any circumstance, seen her act scared and start whimpering. That was enough to make me go nope and turn the hell around. Like I said, I don't have any belief in anything paranormal, but I have no intention of messing around with whatever the hell I had just encountered, and so we turned around and finished our walk. I immediately glanced behind me, frequently making sure that there wasn't anyone following, and we're now home safe, which leads to me typing this right now. I've never experienced something like that, and I have no idea what to think. Rationally, I think it would be more likely I hallucinated or something rather than it being anything paranormal, but the thing that bugs me the most is my dog's extremely uncharacteristic reaction. If I had been seeing things, then why would she have behaved in a way that she had never before? I just wanted to share my story here and hopefully I don't sound insane. When I was 14, I had a strange encounter that still puzzles me to this day. On the weekends, I'd sometimes go to my mother's place, as my parents are divorced. The house she lived in was converted into several small apartments. It was a creepy old farmhouse. The house was at least 150, maybe 200 years old. My mom told me off and on of strange sounds that she'd been hearing and seeing things in the corner of her eyes, feeling like she was being watched. This one particular evening when I spent the night, I brought my N64 because my mom would go to bed early and I'd still be up for a few more hours. I still remember to this day what game I was playing, WWF No Mercy. I was sitting Indian style on the floor playing the story mode. I just finished a mission in the game and set down the controller to the left of me, behind me. Directly behind me was a recliner, and I'll never forget what I saw next. I went to grab the controller and saw what appeared to be a hoof, like a horse next to the controller on the floor. Insects and blood was coming out of the sliver that separated the hoof. I thought to myself, how strange, and I slowly glanced up and this demonic figure was staring back at me. It leaned down towards me, its face got down in my face and grinned the most evil smile I'd ever seen. The eyes were black, its face was red, it was a one-winged creature, and blood was dripping from its teeth. It was so surreal that I immediately went into a panic attack and blacked out. I learned later that it was the fight-or-flight response that I was having, and several seconds later I came to laying on the floor and I could barely move. The demonic figure in the chair was laughing at me. It was as if my fear and energy had been sucked dry from me, and I lost all strength. I did all I could to crawl to my mom's room and woke her up. After I woke her up, we talked, and she believed me. She told me that she too had seen the same thing earlier that week, but didn't want to scare me. I don't know what to make of it, and still think of it to this day. I have no doubt demons and angels are real, and believe me, the last thing you ever want to encounter is a demon smiling right in your face. I don't care if you believe me or not, but when two people see the same thing on separate occasions, either we're both crazy, or something is and was wrong with that old farmhouse. My mom has thankfully moved since, and we haven't encountered that thing again. About a year and a half ago in June, my brother and I were driving back from Ellie, Nevada to Las Vegas. If you know Nevada, you understand how sparsely populated the state is outside of Reno, Carson City, and Las Vegas. So, we were about an hour or so into the drive when we realized that we wouldn't make it back without falling asleep, as it was already pretty late at night. We agreed to stop at a hotel for the night. We came to a town called King. 
I had never heard of King Nevada, nor have I found anything about it since, no matter what I looked up or asked. It looked like one of those old western movie towns where it's one road with little buildings on each side and about the same size as one of those towns. All there really was of note was the hotel that we stayed at called King Hotel and a McDonald's. The few other buildings didn't seem worth mentioning. We hadn't seen anyone or any cars while driving in the town. We went into the hotel and saw the only person we ever saw in that place, the single clerk at the front desk. We got our room key and went straight to bed. We were awoken by talking outside of what we assumed was around 8 because when we woke up, we realized that there was no clock in the room. In fact, there were only beds, a hotel, a shower, and a sink. Not even a dresser or a TV. We went outside to leave. The hotel clerk wasn't there to check out, so we left our key at the desk. No one else was inside the hotel or outside. We still haven't figured out where the talking came from. We went to McDonald's to eat, however, it was drive through only. We ordered our McMuffins at the drive through then rounded the corner to pay and get our food at the next window. We saw the bag already sitting on the shelf outside the window with the window closed and the inside dark. We got our food and left without paying. We didn't want to stick around anymore. We were honestly getting a bit scared at this point. There was no cell service, nor did we remember ever arriving there. We just suddenly found ourselves in that town. I was reminded of this because a few hours ago, I read a green text about a similar experience someone had in Utah. We only saw one person there, the hotel attendant, and we drove for half an hour before we saw any road signs again. He and I both remembered exactly the same, so I don't think we hallucinated or anything like that. If you have any ideas on what happened in that town, please let me know. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday and Thursday at 7pm EST, and there are super fun live streams every Sunday and Wednesday night. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit r slash letsreadofficial or over email at letsreadsubmissions at gmail.com and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for members of the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast where you can hear all of these stories and big compilations located anywhere you listen to podcasts. All links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, to be a good girl and eat your vegetables.